Hello, in this presentation, I'll be talking about the graphs of geometric sequences. And I've got two geometric sequences on display, one in black, one in orange. Let's talk about this black one first. Well, the first term, A equals three. And there's also a common ratio, six divided by the term immediately preceding it. Six divided by three is two. Twelve divided by six is two. Twenty-four divided by twelve is two. It'll always be two for this sequence. So the common ratio is two for this black one. Let's do the orange one. Well, A is three, the first term. Nine divided by the term immediately preceding it. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 81 divided by 27 is 3. The common ratio for this orange one is 3. Well, they're both geometric sequences. They both have the same value of A. But for the black one, R equals 2. For the orange one, R equals 3. And what I've done is I've drawn the graph for these two sequences. So what happens when you go from a sequence with a r equals 2 to um, r equals 3? How does that affect a graph? Well, for the black one, for r equals 2, we get this curve here. But for r equals 3, the orange one, we get a much steeper curve. As n, as n increases, this curve rises more steeply. And that's what happens as you increase that value of r. Uh, when you have a situation where r is bigger than one, and I'm talking now specifically about the number line for r, I mean, this part of the number line here where R equals, where R is bigger than one. Um, when R is bigger than one and uh, you're increasing R, draw a graph of the geometric sequence and you're going to get a steeper, a steeper curve. One that rises more steeply as N increases. And that's the pattern you should expect to see. Well, I'm just going to pull this out of the way. And try and just focus on one geometric sequence at a time. Well, that's the type of curve you get when um, A equals 3 and R equals 2. Now, just by looking at the curve, you can determine the attributes of the geometric sequence. Uh, for example, when n equals 1, the value of that first term is going to be 3. When n equals 2, the value of that second term, well, it's going to be 6. When n equals 3, the value of that third term is going to be 12. So you can determine r. Well, you can just say 12 divided by the uh, term immediately preceding it, which is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 6 divided by 3, the term immediately preceding it. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So just by looking at the coordinates of the points on the curve, you can determine the characteristics, the attributes of the geometric sequence. You can work out A and you can work out the common ratio. So uh, that's the type of curve you'll get 
when r is bigger than one. But what happens when um, a is negative? Now, as n increases, the curve moves further away from the horizontal axis when a is positive. Let's look at what happens when a is negative. Well, that's the sort of graph we get. Still a curve, but uh, when r is bigger than one and a is negative, Yes, it's still a curve, but um, what happens is it, uh, it uh, falls away, uh, it gets lower and lower, it falls away from the uh, N axis rather than rising. So let's have a look at what happens at another part of the number line for R. When R is bigger than zero, but less than one. Let's go for 0 0.5. So you'll still get a curve, but in this case, as N increases, uh, the curve gets closer and closer to the N axis or the horizontal axis. And it falls towards the um, horizontal axis. When A is negative, you still get a curve. But in this case, the curve rises towards the n-axis. And that's the type of shape you get. It rises towards the n-axis. Let's have a look at another part of the number line for R. Uh, what happens when R is between negative one and zero. All right, let's go for minus 0 0.5. Well, that's a very strange situation. It zigzags. Yeah, so um, it, it gets closer and closer to the N axis uh, as N increases. But it starts uh, high above and then goes below the N axis and uh, moves around, goes up and down. Uh, and as I said, um, gets closer and closer to that N axis as N increases. It starts from above the N axis. When um, A is negative, just flip that around. See, now it starts below the N axis. But it still zigzags its way towards the N axis. As N increases, it gets closer and closer to that horizontal axis. Let's have a look at another part of the curve. When R is less than negative one. So we'll go for minus two. Oh, very unusual. Let's have a look at this. See if I can draw it.
yeah, you get a zigzag sort of graph again. Uh, it, it starts above the n-axis. I've got a positive value of a. But uh, it, it zigzags across and increasingly moves away from the horizontal axis, from the n-axis. And that's what typically happens when r is less than minus 1. And what happens when a is negative? Well, it starts from below the n-axis, but still zigzags and uh, moves increasingly away from that horizontal axis or n-axis. And that's what the uh, graph of the geometric sequence looks like when uh, r is less than minus 1 and a is negative. Now, what I've organised here is just a summary of what I've been speaking about. Um, so when A is positive, uh, what does the graph look like when R is less than minus 1, uh, between minus 1 and 0? Uh, yes, between 0 and 1, and when R is greater than 1. So uh, these are the general trends that you see, and these were the things that I was speaking about uh, in this presentation. It's just a summary of what the graphs look like, the graphs for um, a geometric sequence for different values of A and R. The only ones I haven't covered are when R actually equals 1 and R equals negative 1. I haven't covered those graphs. But uh, I'll let you work that out by yourself. But for now, uh, Thank you for watching this presentation. Hope you got something out of it.